Hello, I think we're live. It is just after 7.30. I hope I haven't kept everyone waiting too long. Oh, happy birthday, Donna. That's cool. I see everyone saying happy birthday to you. That's nice. Wow, Ginny, you were here early tonight. <laughs> wow. Hey, Cherie. Hi, Jean. I missed you on Friday night. I don't think you were here. Friday night. We missed you. Just looking through. Hi, Margaret. Hey, Jody. Nice to see you. We've got a lot of people that we regularly and normally see. And if you're not, if this is your first time here or if you haven't introduced yourself before, please pop on and say hello. Um, we've got a great group of girls watching tonight that love to say hello to each other and we love having new people join us. So, please say hi. Hey Katrina, hi Michelle. Hi Amanda, thank you for joining my VIP group. I saw you did that. Oh hey Joanne, well, good morning from Canada. Which part of Canada? It's a big country. Are you east or west? Because we've got a couple of girls here from the Pacific Northwest, um, if you're on that side of the country, or um, I don't know, somewhere in the middle maybe. Love to hear where people are. All right, guys, I hope you've had a good Easter. It's Sunday, Easter Sunday here, so happy Easter to everyone. Hey, Deb, nice to see you. Um, so, yeah, it's been a lovely a lovely Easter Sunday. Um, and tomorrow, of course, here in Australia is also a public holiday. Um, hey, Rhonda, nice to see you. Hi down there in Tassie. That's cool. All right, um, I'm going to play around with a couple of things tonight. I'm going to have my last play for a little while with the New Horizons stuff, only because today is tomorrow is the day that I'm finishing registrations for my class. So if you're interested in joining the class, you can be anywhere in the world to do the tutorial. It's just a tutorial link, a private link that I send you. Um, it costs $20 Australian, which is a lot less if you're somewhere else, for example, if you're in the US I think it works out to be about $14 someone who has purchased from the US before might know what roughly what it is um, hey Joan and um, and so that's if you just want to do the tutorial if you live in Australia you can actually get the tutorial and all the supplies to make up the products to make up the projects sorry so I will show them one last time just quickly tonight because I know some of you have seen them before but um, for those of you who haven't, I'll quickly show them again. So, hey, Shirley, nice to see you. I saw Amanda was here as well. Uh, hey, Anita. Hi, Selvega. Okay. All right. So let's switch over to the desk and have a bit of a look. Um, the retiring list is still going, but it's, um, it's certainly some things have already sold out, but there's still plenty left. So I've gone through my catalogue, and this is my one with the pink dot, as you can see there in the corner. And this is the one where I've gone through and highlighted all the things that are retiring. Just makes it easier for me to see rather than looking at a list. I'm not really a list person when it comes to visualizing stuff like that. So if you're like me, 1539 you think in the US. That's very specific, Jean. <laughs> but you must remember. So um, there you go. It's a little more than I thought. $15.39 $15 is what Jean said. Is That would have been last time. So it could change a little bit depending on the... Um, the exchange rate of the day so that's probably that's probably going to make it um, change a little just a little bit all right okay so let's switch over to the desk still my favorite thing to do is go click and away it goes rather than fumbling around and dropping my phone like I used to <laughs> and if you stuck with me since those days you're um, you're very very um, patient with me and I appreciate that thank you so much Oh, thanks, Cherie. You know what? I put it up when I put my hair up when I'm having a bad hair day. <laughs> and it wasn't especially bad, but when I got out of the shower, I just couldn't make it do what I wanted it to. So up it goes. So when it's up, it means that I, it's not doing what I want it to. <laughs> and I'm in desperate need of a haircut because my hairdresser, who was also my beautiful friend, hung up her scissors back in December. And, um, and so I haven't had a haircut since then. And where are we now? April. So it's well and truly overdue, but I've got to find a new hairdresser. So there you go. <laughs> hey, Megan. All right. So 
This is the gorgeous New Horizons papers and you probably have seen these. I've done lots with them. They are absolutely stunning and you can see why they're called New Horizons because there's kind of like you can almost, I was talking on Friday night about Mr Squiggle, you can almost see a scene in this and your brain kind of fills in the gaps. It kind of fills in the bits that are missing. So, you know, it really is just beautiful watercolouring work but, you know, you can see things over here, you know. What can you see in this one? I'm wondering, that, you know, these could be snow caps up here in the top. Then these kind of look like, I don't know, could be pine trees. There could be some little houses down here by the water. So you can see things in there. Can anybody else see that? Ah, Susan was live yesterday. I saw that too. <laughs> so there you go. Um, and on the back is kind of just watercolory scenes that you could use all sorts of things. Ah, Sally and Rhonda know each other, do you? There you go. <laughs> all right, so beautiful watercolouring kind of effects. This one is a that's a lower down horizon, and once again, I can see some snow caps in my mind filling those in there. That could definitely be an Alaskan scene, and in fact, that's really really pretty. I really like this one. I'm going to pop that one to one side because I might use it, and I might use that one. We'll see. We'll see. Some beautiful. This is one of my favourites, but I'm using this one in my class, so I'm not going to use it tonight. I'm going to try and give it a little bit of variety. This one could be all kinds of things. We could do, we could have a bit of fun with this. You could add some trees, you could add a gate or a fence, you could add some grass and some birds and do all kinds of things with it. It could be quite, quite pretty. Um, and on the back, look, there we've got those mountains again. Definitely snow caps on those ones. And, and the other night, was it Cherie that was saying she could see buildings and actually awnings on the buildings? So there's all sorts of things in there. Yeah, Susan Camfield is the person that um, Jean is talking about and Kay was there as well. Um, and Donna, she's fabulous. She's in the US and she's also one of my closest friends. She's just a lovely person. Um, we work quite closely together. We're actually what we call accountability buddies, which means we work together. We talk just about every day and we help each other with um, with issues or problems or things that we, you know, want to try. And it's really nice to have someone to buddy up with when you're in business because if they are doing the same sort of stuff that you are, you can kind of encourage each other and help each other and give each other ideas. And we've even done a class together, which we hope to do again in the future. So, yeah. Um, there you go. Oh, where was the marsh? The marsh was here. Is this what you mean? Is this the marsh, Cherie? It could be. Yep. And there you go. There's a village. I know you saw that. Definitely. Yeah, Susan's great. And I'm glad to hear that a few of you watch her because um, she's also a lovely person. And that's always a good thing. All right, so this one, this one that's got the purple on one side, this one's got like a watery scene. I did a card with this a couple of weeks ago where I added um, a boat. And we did that. I think that might have been on one of the lives, actually. I can't remember. Sometimes I can't remember if I did it in my own time or in, as a live. And this is the one that some people think might looks a bit like a building over there. <laughs> so you can see how beautiful these are. So I'm not going to spend lots of time going through them. Um, look, some different, really different kinds of scenes, so many. And they're just so beautiful. And you can let your imagination run wild and add all kinds of things to them. All right, so I thought we might just do a last one tonight. Um, I have got the On the Horizon stamp set, which is the matching stamp set for this DSP. I probably should show you very quickly in the catalogue what, what it all is. Grab myself a mini catalogue because it's in this one. So this is the January to June mini catalogue. And this one is the one that um, is going, yeah, it goes until the end of June. So you can see they've done lots of different things. They've done some embossing on this one. They've used the diorama, layering diorama dies with this one. They've got a scene that they've done in, in parts. And we've also got this one where they've used the dies on the background there. We've got a fence here. We've got another fence here and some stamping. So, so many different ways you can play around with this. But if I was to give you a tip about using these papers, I would say keep it simple. The paper is so beautiful. If you add too many things to it, it kind of takes away from the beautiful paper. So I would keep it pretty simple. All right. So you can see the paper down here. Here it is. It's only $20. This um, six by six paper, as you can see, it's a, they come in this size. And there's four sheets of each design in the pack. 
um, for a total of 48 sheets. So you're getting 12 different designs, which is really cool, front and back. And then you've got your stamp set, you've got your dies. See, there's the fence or the gate, depending on how you look at it. There's grass and some mountains and some slopes, um, a wooden sign, some water, some trees and some little houses. So really cool. Then these cool little um, cotton ribbons. It's a ribbon combo pack, which comes in Misty Moonlight and Petal Pink. This is it. It's kind of a quite a thin ribbon, but it's it's really nice, easy to tie. Okay, the size of this makes it sit quite flat on your cards. And then the last thing is these cool little pebbles. And I grabbed them before, and I don't know whether I brought them over to – maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Huh, maybe I didn't. Oh, well, doesn't matter. You can see them here. They are really, really stunning, and I'll show them to you on a couple of my projects as well. So really quickly, let's show you the projects for those of you who haven't seen them. Uh, give me one second. I did bring them over. <laughs> oh, I do this every night. What is what is wrong with me, guys? Put them right behind me. Here we go. All right. So in order, these are the ca the cards in the class. There's this one with some embossing on this panel up here, and some snow capped mountains. A little triptych kind of a thing going on here. With and you can see I've got some of those little pebbles. Can you see the little pebbles down the bottom here? They're really cool because they're adhesive. So you just you know peel them off and stick them on. They're cool. And then we've got the birdies. Love, love, love the birdies. And then this one is kind of like the specialty card for this particular class. So this one, it opens up and you've got this piece here that opens out. If I can pick it up. All right. And then when you close it like this, it, your, your scene continues. So it's a panorama flap card is what I'm calling that. Um, kind of cute. And you've got some more little pebbles. Look, I had added some more pebbles in a different colour. So early onset dementia, I know, right? <laughs> exactly. Let's hope not. <laughs> I really would not want, it's not funny because I really don't want that to happen. All right, then because these are all so simple, I normally put three cards in a class, but this time I added a, an extra card, a bonus card, which is this one, which is just a really simple little scene, bit of sponging, and it's made up with the dies. And then I also offered the separate uh, choice. If people didn't want to, they could use, instead of the blue, they could use the glittery water. And I don't know if I bring that up closer, if you can see the glitter on that, which I thought was kind of nice. So whichever one people prefer is the one they can do, but I'm putting both in the packs. So there you go. That's it. <laughs> um, so let's have a little play with a couple of these pieces. I'm just deciding which one. I like them both. And you know what? We have another, We I have shown this before, but we have another um, die set called the Grassy Grove. Some of you might remember that one. And the dies are called the Grove dies. They're these. And I'm not going to do this tonight, but I want to give you the idea. I have talked about this previously, but these ones, if you have them, work really great with this paper because you have this one really big die, this one here. Look, we've got deers and trees and all sorts of things. But there's this die here. Can you see it? And it gives us this, like, grove of trees, hence the name the grove dies. And... What's really cool about this is that you can put all your different scenes, whichever one you pick, let's just pick one randomly. Just say, and then you can have them sort of showing. So if you did the trees black or very in a very dark color, and then you've got your scene showing through the trees and it looks amazing. Okay, so if you have these grove dyes, they work really, really well with the papers. Okay, so the Grove dies, you don't have to rush to get them. They're going to be going into the new catalog, so they're not retiring, which is great. Um, however, the Horizon stuff is retiring. <laughs> not straight away. You've got until June, the end of June, to get that. It's no rush. But if you want them, uh, don't wait Don't wait until the end because I imagine that they will sell out. Okay, But right now you can still get the Horizons dies, no trouble. All right, so I'm thinking... Or I don't know which one to use. I like them all. They're all so pretty. All right, let me have a look at my stamp set. This is the one I couldn't find the other day. And I'm thinking I might use this one here. 
the grove dyes are great aren't they in so many ways you can use them no was it you i think it was you that um used the grove dyes and put your photographs behind them like beautiful photos that you've taken was that you i think it was so if that was you um i thought they were lovely these are the birds the birds are just such a gorgeous gorgeous set um i've got a couple of got these trees i think the trees would go nice the color in here is evening evergreen so let's add some evening evergreen trees moses parting the red sea in this one oh didn't think of that <laughs> oh, i added too much ink let me grab my grab that off i made a for dinner tonight i made some scallop potatoes and it was very nice but i managed to cut myself <laughs> And I'm thinking, oh, gee, I hope I don't open that up again tonight because that would be bad. So I'm going to add some trees that just come in off the edge here, okay? And without without um, re-inking, I'm just going to add some more so they're kind of a bit fainter. And can you see how they kind of mix into this background? They kind of take almost like they're part of the paper now, which I think looks really, really good. I'm going to ink that up again. I'm going to stamp it off once and I'm going to add some more of those over here. They're looking rather nice. I'm deciding which part of this I'm going to use as, you know, I don't have to do it. Now, I could use black for the birds. I could, you know, you know what, I think I will use black. I was going to say I could also use the evening evergreen for the birds. But let's let's see how we go. Right, now the thing with these birdies, just to be careful, is it's really easy to get them upside down. So if you're stamping them, um, I would be careful, you know, try look both ways and you will be able to see when you turn it one way, oh yeah, that's not right because some of those birds are upside down now, whereas this one, yeah, they're all the right way. So I'm going to have some birdies coming here from the left-hand side. You see a waterfall. Where is the waterfall? I, it looks to me like there's a bit of sunlight coming down, like it's a, a rainy day with a bit of sunlight coming. Right, there we go. I think it's enough birdies. Yeah, the trees look really good, don't they, when you kind of mix them in with the background. I like them. I'm going to go grab my... Um, grab my stamp and scrub and my mist and quickly clean these up still my favorite cleaning tool yes i know we have the chamois and the chamois um, does a good job but i still prefer this especially with rubber stamps i still prefer the the clean that i get with the scrub i just find it the best one for me but everyone's different right all right hmm i'm wondering is there anything else i want to add probably not right at this second i might add a fence later and I'm deciding how I would like this to go. So this is six inches wide. So if we were to cut it into three pieces, let's just see. I'm going to, I'm kind of, the other night I made a slimline card and I didn't anticipate doing that again tonight. But you know what? I could, I could do a slimline card, but then we might lose too much of our, I might just make a big card this time. It's nice, isn't it? I like it. All right. Let me grab my trimmer. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking out loud, and that's sometimes a bit dangerous. Let's see what we can do here. And then two inches and two inches, obviously that's going to be exactly in three because it's a six inches, six inch piece of paper. And I'm deciding, do I want to keep it? It's very pretty. Let's use some evening evergreen paper. This would be nice for a, like a, uh, what am I trying to say? Um, you know how you can like make a little framed picture? This would be a nice way to do that, I think. Evening evergreen. Mm. Oh, I have to get some more evening evergreen. I do have a little bit, but I don't have as much as I thought I did. So... All right. 
So I'm deciding, do I want, I'm going to take, I probably could have done this before, but I'm going to take a little bit off the top. And we're going to have some birdies kind of, yeah, I'm going to just take an inch off. One. And some of these birds are going to be off the edge now. In fact, I might be about to, oh, did I, oh, no, I didn't decapitate any birds. That's good. <laughs> Wouldn't want to do that. I really am literally making this up as I go along. All right, so let's see. And then I might take a little off the bottom as well. Right, so I'm going, now I've made this, it's 10 centimetres wide. We're back into centimetres now. <laughs> So it is going to be a longish, um, no, wrong, that's how it goes. It's going to be a longish card, like longer than usual, a little, but it's not going to be, it's going to be the width of a normal card. So let me see. Okay, if I go ten and a half this way. So you guys are getting to see me just creating and kind of making it up. <laughs> this is what I do. I'm going to go, I'm going to make this six and a half. So it's longer than a usual card. And let's see, we might need to cut it down a little bit. Or we might not. Oh, not much. I mean, I could spread them out a little more. But I think I'd like to have them a little closer together. There we go. So I'm going to take about, hmm, I don't know, three millimetres off the end. And then I think it's about right. So let's try that. One, two, and three. Yep, perfect. There we go. It's looking good. So you can see what I mean about not wanting to do too much to it. Now, before I stick this down, I'm just looking to see if there's anything else that I want to add. I've got a little mark here. I could add some more birds. <laughs> that would be one way to cover up this little mark. Or maybe that's where my greeting should go. Maybe. Because it's kind of a blank spot. So it could be a good place for a greeting. Um, we could add some grass down here over in the corner. That A little bit of grass coming over the edge. That would work. And if we wanted to go in with our dies... The Horizon dies, guys, are they're one of my favourite die sets we've had in a long time because we could add like a bit of a fence. We didn't even we don't even have to add a whole fence. Like I could add the top of the fence is the one with the pointy bits. Okay, just remember that and you won't go wrong. I could even add a little bit of a fence kind of coming over this edge here. Or this way. I don't have to add the whole thing because I think if I add the whole thing, it's going to take up too much room and I don't want to do that. But I think maybe a little. What do you guys think? Reeds? You love winging it? Yeah, that well, winging it is my thing, Jodie. <laughs> ah, yeah, it is. Six by six is a hard size to work with sometimes, but you can kind of manipulate it and like a lake falling into the waterfall. Ah, right. Okay. Yep. I see what you mean. Yeah. All right. I got it now. You like, that looks brilliant. Oh, good. Excellent. Hey there, Carolyn. Happy Easter you, to, to you as well. I'm very, very nice. Uh, and see, he's seen another Canadian. We have um, already got a couple of Canadians tonight. All right. Well, I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'm going to add a little bit of a, a bit of a fence and for this, I'm going to use a piece of white because, you know, you can, the good thing about making a fence white is that you can, you know, you can dirty it up, you can add colour to it, you can do whatever you like, really. Um, and that, that can be quite, quite handy. And I've got my, I've got my mini. I'm just wondering, the mini will take up less space of the mini is just not quite as handy as my other cap, my other machine. But I'm going to grab the mini and I'm going to close up this ink pad. 
before I get in trouble. And you guys who are watching know why. <laughs> All right, let's try. Let's try this. Um, for anyone who's wondering, both the Mini and the Big Machine are both going up in price in the new catalogue that comes out next month. In fact, most things are going up next month. So ink pads, for example, are going to go up by a dollar from $13 to $14. Um, no one's really surprised because, you know, at the moment everything, prices on everything seem to be going crazy. But having said that, no one likes it either. So if there is something that you would really like, this side of um, the new catalogue coming out, grab it, grab it now. Okay, I think that is probably a good idea. Let's grab this piece of white. I'm going to do both because you know, then I can choose. And let's pop this on top of here. Give it a push and wind it through. Not even started on the chocolate yet. Well, because it's only, what, morning over there, right? <laughs> I've been eating chocolate all day <laughs> and feeling not even a little bit guilty about it. All right, so we've got our, we've got our bits of fence here. Grabbing my take your pick tool because it's got the, the dye brush and also the little the piecing piece which helps me get those out if you don't have one of these these are so worthwhile but I also bought as well as the take your pick tool I also bought as an additional thing I bought the dye brush I find that I leave that in all the time because that to me is very very useful and I find it something that I'm constantly reaching for so with that in mind now we might we might add some grass or I could stamp some grass, but either way, let's see. All right, so this is going to end up on here, and I'm still deciding whether we stamp or whether we maybe. Okay, so if I wanted to have these down here, I do like the bit of fence down here. Don't you guys like that? That looks rather nice. And then this one is... The fence going the other way. I think maybe that one might be better. All right, so let's attach this. So what I'm going to do, you could use um, the sponge technique that you guys know I like to do, although for a small amount of um, fence like this, I'm probably not going to worry about it. I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to my bits here. And let's put that. over the edge of that and then I'm going to turn it over on the other side and grab my scissors and just snip off those extra bits All right, how about that and it's starting to really look like a proper scene now I love the scene cut into pieces. I don't know what it is, but it just looks really, really nice. <laughs> and this is like giving us an idea now of something in the foreground, which is really cool. I'm tempted with one of those pieces that I cut off. Let's see. What have I got? These were a bit, they're a bit small. If there was a bigger piece, I would probably cut my grass with these. Because, hmm, deciding. See, it's big enough for that bit there, but it doesn't. It's not long enough. Hmm. Or I could just do it in green. That's the other option, just in green. But sometimes it's nice to do it in this kind of variegated, variegated look here because. Hmm. All right, let me grab another piece of that if I put it. So I've got my, I could do it just in the plain green, but the variegated look is nice. So if I was to cut off a piece, 
see what I mean about this kind of this is much more um, interesting perhaps than than the flat green. So let's. And then grab this one more time. Piece number one, piece number two. And sometimes it's worth it's worth thinking about are you going to get a better look with the DSP or with the flat cardstock? Variegated says Jody, grass on dimensionals. Oh, you could do that. See how now our grass is very interesting. Can you see that? Move this out of the way. Can you see how it's not just flat, it's and it's gonna it's gonna fit in with the paper much much better. Eleven a.m. Well, I think that's chocolate time, isn't it? Grass on dimensionals. Let's try that. All right. So I think I'm ready to glue this down. If I was gonna stamp here, um, I would do that before I glue it down. But I think I've talked myself out of that. So I hope everyone over the last couple of weeks that I've been showing this paper a lot, I hope that everyone has really got um, an idea of how nice this paper is and how nice this whole suite is. And the fact that it's not going to be in the new catalogue says to me <laughs> that is absolutely something worth getting now. Okay, and don't forget, if you do get it by the end of tomorrow, um, then you'll call for my, for my class and if you're in Australia I'll be sending you all the pieces. So let's get this here. I'm putting this the same amount of distance away from the like so I've got the same little border on the top, the bottom and also on the side and it's the same as what's over here as well. And then this one will go in the middle. If anyone has questions about the class, all the details are on my blog. I love using it too, Nari. Absolutely. I just I just remembered that I forgot to put my phone in airplane mode. So I hope it's still, <laughs> still working okay. <laughs> all right. So it's coming together. It's looking very pretty. It's quite atmospheric too. And we've got our little piece of grass here and it can easily go on and kind of hide that over there in the corner. What do we think about that? It's very flimsy and I know someone suggested putting it on with dimensionals. If I was using cardstock, I might, but this paper being so flimsy, I'm less inclined to use dimensionals behind it. Plus, it, it's going to get a little bit lost down here anyway dimensionals or no so and that's good I don't want it to be like the main focus of everything so um, I'm just going to glue it straight on but that's just whoops a bit too much glue there oh well it won't be going anywhere because there's a lot of glue I just stuck on there There we go. So I've got it sticking directly on top of the on top of the um, the fence. What do we think? Do we like it? Right now, it is a bit of an unusual size. It's the same width as a regular card, but it's a little bit longer. So with that in mind, I will um, I'm going to I'm going to have to work on my base. What I'm going to do with my base. But I do like, I like the whole idea. Something else that um, you could do is you could have it scored here and you could have it so like it was kind of a, a fold out card. Bend, it would bend out into three paces. A little bit like the um, 
what's it called? The Bay Window card that we did recently. Um, I did that in my last class last month with the, the Ways of the Ocean set, was it? No, it was with the flowering tulips. <laughs> I know, you'll have to, Amanda. It's just beautiful. So, so lovely. All right, let's, I've got all these little pieces left over and I'm thinking that that might look better than stark white, although we do have white in our fence, so we would it would be okay, and we're going to have white probably as the card base as well. So, hmm, let me see. I cut the, cut the fence out. I wonder if there's enough left. Then I might get away with it. I might. Let's see. In here we've got a little, a little word that says breathe, which is a rather nice, simple little stamp. But I did notice when I put this on, normally I'm really good at getting my stamps nice and straight with the labels. This one I messed it up a little bit. So I'm going to... So even though it's going to look like... I usually do a test. Um, even though it's going to look like I'm... Oh, cookie. Goodness me. Cookie's obviously having a moment up there this morning, so this afternoon. So I apologise if he's noisy for anyone else so yeah I noticed that it's a little a little bit crooked I've got to be a bit careful how I put it on yep see I did got it quite crooked that time let me try again that's better all right so thank you use this tiny little bit of paper and it's too small this piece to put into my pick a banner punch I've really done it very small so I'm actually just going to flag the end and I do this by it's not as good as the punch but this is the next best thing cut straight in and then draw a little line in your head with the scissors cut from the corner to that line that you just cut and from this side back into the corner All right so it's not absolutely perfect but it's not bad and I'm going to snip this end off either as well All right and it's going to go right about there All right we could put it on dimensionals or we could see how crooked this one is um, or we could put it we could put it flat but I'm going to pop a couple of mini dimensionals behind it. Too much chocolate. Well, you can't. Did you know that if they eat chocolate, they can die? It's very bad for them. Same with cats. You don't give them chocolate either. And I think dogs are the same. So chocolate is really probably chocolate's bad for us too, but we still eat it anyway. <laughs> At least we don't normally die. Anyway, there we go. So this is a very simple little card. There's not a lot to it. I've cut it into three. I've added some birds and a sentiment, a little bit of a gate and some grass, and I'm calling that finished. Okay, it's very simple, and I'll pop it on a I'll I'll pop it on a um, card base when I'm done here, um, and um, you'll see it up a little bit later on a, on, on a white card base. So I'm gonna probably use because this is a little bit longer, isn't it, than six. So I'm actually going to probably cut my card base out of 12 by 12 paper. So it's going to be pretty much the right size. But normal A4 paper, I've made it not really quite the right size for that. So I'll do it with 12 by 12. There we go. All right, so we're going to call that one done. Lid back on here. And I'm going to do a second card tonight. We're keeping it pretty quick tonight. I've got... In the morning, I've got to race off and um, my son's going away um, with on a youth camp this week. And so we've got a few things we need to get him before he can go. <laughs> and um, and with that in mind, I've got to race off in the first thing in the morning and try and grab those. So there we go. Last Monday, I did the same thing. When he, needed, he was going to Canberra with his dad and he needed, um, he needed some warm clothes because it's pretty cold down there. So let's move these out of the way. All the bits and pieces. Whoops, better put that back away. So, because I haven't got enough blocks, because I've actually, I'm packing up for a, a class this week and I've already packed a lot of my blocks already. 
So let's clean these stamps. It would look nice in a frame. Yeah. And the thing is the papers are so pretty, you don't need to do very much to them at all and they look great in a frame. I would really like to you know, do maybe some Mother's Day projects or something like that with them. I think that'd be nice. There we go. This one goes away. This is just something I do. I hang on to the pieces that the rubber, the rubber stamps come into and then I push them back into that spot. You don't have to do that, but the reason I do that is I know just at a glance if there's anything missing and it helps me keep track of my stamps. So there we go. All right. Let's pop that one away. Don't forget, guys, the class closes tomorrow night. If you were thinking about doing the class, uh, register by tomorrow evening, by midnight tomorrow night, Monday. Okay. All right. So I thought I'd play with something else that's retiring. Okay. And these are, I had a look tonight. The Sea Life dies are low in stock. So um, the Seascape stamp set is still available here in Australia but the Sea Life dies are getting low. So if you're interested in the bundle or you're interested in the dies, you'll need to probably grab them fairly soon. I don't know how, when they say low in stock, I don't know how many that means we have left, but I know it's not many. So um, if you love them, grab them now. So I'm going to pull in some bits and pieces. I'm actually using some of the gorgeous um, Ways of the Ocean paper. This paper is to die for. It is so beautiful. Um, this is also going to finish up. You've only got a couple of weeks left of this one. It's not going into the new catalogue. Um, so if you love this paper, I mean, how beautiful is this? It is beautifully artistically made by someone much more talented than I am. Absolutely gorgeous. And the papers are to die for. So you can see the colours are amazing. Blues and greens, but also um, some other colours thrown in like coral and yellow. I mean, some of these are just they're, they're so stunning. Look at them some coral and yellow in that one okay here we have I know some of them remind me of certain things like this kind of reminds me you know it looks very barrier reef to me I think that's just beautiful <laughs> and that one looks like waves coming into shore don't you think just gorgeous and there's another one that reminds me of a turtle um, I think it's which one is it this is it that one no it's not that one the turtle one is this one this one reminds me of a turtle especially like in some of these bits in here it looks like turtle skin isn't that lovely just lovely so um these are coming to the end of their their run um like i said only a couple of weeks left and they'll be gone so if you love them grab some more you can absolutely stunning paper i bought a lot of it because <laughs> i loved it so much all right all right so i've got a piece of um basic white card this is basic white thick which is my preferred um card stock for um making card bases i'm just gonna pop that down and then i've got a piece of bermuda bay card stock and a little piece that I've cut of one of those sheets that I just showed you from the Waves of the Ocean paper. And it's this has got, um, there's some Pool Party and Coastal Cabana in here, but also some Pacific Point, which is a colour you don't, I don't use Pacific Point a lot, even though it's a beautiful blue. What would you do with the papers if you didn't have the wave dies? Well, I'm about to make a card with them and we're not going to use the wave dies, Donna, so this might answer your question. Um, I'm going to use something totally different. I'm going to use the um, the, the uh, Seascape stamp set and the Sea Life dies. I think the papers lend themselves to any watery kind of a scene. If you've got any stamps that have anything to do with water, whether that be boats or sea life or, you know, fish, whatever, you know, you can do all kinds of things with them. So I'm actually going to be working on this piece of paper here. Let's just move these to one side. And I'm going to use, I've already got some of them on blocks. I'm going to use this big corally stamp here because it's so nice. And I'm going to use a couple of different colours. I'm going to use um, probably Bermuda Bay. I thought I'd use Night of Navy for the coral because I just kind of, the coral stamp is one of my favourites from this set. I only got this set very recently, um, much to my 
annoyance because I should have got it a lot earlier and got a lot more use out of it before it retired. But anyway, um, and I just want to, you know, I just want to have a kind of a watery scene and I don't need to have a lot going on in here because the, the DSP is going to do a lot of it for me. So let me grab, do I want Bermuda Bay or do I want Coastal Cabana? Let's try Coastal Cabana. That's this one here because I don't I see how dark these are going to be. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think they'll be dark enough. Um, it's a bit of seaweed going on over here. Let's have a little bit behind here as well. It's a nice stamp too, isn't it? Isn't it a nice stamp? You do have some have some fun with some kelp. Now I have actually cut out one of these dies in advance. Um, so there are only four dies in the Sea Life dies, and you have a seahorse and a fish and some coral and a couple of little tiny fish okay i thought i'd use this one tonight because i haven't used him i've used the seahorse quite a bit um in fact i did a i did a card with yeah surfboard of course the surfboard would be great if you had a surfboard with this um let me show you this is a card i'm doing at um, one of my classes up in the hunter valley this week and you can see i've used the seahorse and i've put some of those other um, there's the coral one and I've used the seahorse dye there okay so you can do different things with that um, but this time I thought I'd use the he looks a bit like a goldfish to me does he look like a goldfish to you this this one like one of those fantails <laughs> that's what it reminds me of this is how it cuts out all right so I've already run it through just to speed things up a little bit um, but when you cut these out the seahorse and this one they don't cut completely out which is kind of cool because if you wanted to you know have them popping out of something and then you could you know lift up the tail a little bit with maybe a mini dimensional or something and you could have them popping up from the page but if you want them to actually be separate to the backing you're going to have to cut them out a little bit so it's attached in a couple of places so let me come in here and cut whoops cut it out so I've just got to do a little snip here okay and a little snip over here I can hear cats out in the hallway starting to make noise because they're hungry <laughs> hopefully someone will feed them All right so this bit's already out but then it needs a little snip here and the, the seahorse is exactly the same. He just needs a few snips to release him from the backing piece. And then we have one here. Now, of course, I could leave him white, but we're not going to do that. I mean, white, he just looks, you know, like someone's dumped a, a, a tin of white paint over him. And that surely can't be good for the environment. So instead, we're going to make him pretty by adding lots of color. To this white fish all right now i'm just pushing out all the little bits and you can see it's it's it was actually very easy to cut but it's it's quite intricate so um, if i want to add a fish that goes kind of over here now i get to choose how i color it and you could do a number of things you could use water painters you could use markers you could use um, sponge daubers which probably either sponge daubers or blending brushes would be my favorite okay either one is fine um, so let me grab some sponge daubers what colors will we make our fish I think some Pacific point might be a little bit but not too much because that's going to bring in the background color and maybe some coastal cabana because and then we need we need to add some maybe some coral or maybe some we could go yellow so we can add a number of you like the seahorse card <laughs> ah yes you'll have to come um i think i think louise is full on she told me she had like 15 or maybe 16 people on wednesday so that's a really big class um so i'm still hey kim how are you no, I'm not. I was only away one night. I had to go up really quickly um, to to help Dad with something, and then um, then I came back the next day. So because um, I had things back here that I had to do, <laughs> it's always something, right? <laughs> I'm glad you like the seahorse card. Thank you guys. All right, so we're going to add some colors to this guy. 
I'm wondering about maybe adding some pink. Maybe some pink would be good. Let me see. So I've got, I mean, this, we could add some magenta madness because it's super, super bright and that might be a really nice, um, a nice way to add some fun colour. Okay, let's see. OTT, over the top, is that what that means? <laughs> gold flakes would be out. Uh, no, gold flakes might be really nice actually. That's, that's a cool idea. We could definitely add some gold flakes. So let me add some yellow down here. So sponge daubers or blending brushes. Sponge daubers, you can be a little bit more precise. Okay, so um, sometimes that's a good idea. And I'm thinking, you have to go, Jenny. Ah, uh, yes, go and I hope everything is okay. Um, I totally get it. Pick up the coral color. Well, I could go a couple of ways. We could use, I have got, hmm, I'm just looking. Give me one second. I think you're right. I think coral might be the go. So this is Calypso Coral. So let's let's try that. I mean, if you get it wrong, we can always cut another. We could always cut another fish. That's very easy to do, but I don't think it'll turn out wrong. I think it'll be fine. Hey, Sharon, nice to see you. <laughs> it's nice to have so many people here tonight. It's lovely. Right, so this pink is super, super bright. This is Magenta Madness, and for anyone who's wondering, that is going. That is leaving us. Um, we'll have polish pink instead. And polish pink is just a little bit more, it's a bit more subtle. Not much, but a little bit more subtle then. So I'm thinking maybe I'll come in with a bit more yellow. What do you guys think? Good thing about picking the lighter colors like the yellow we, we can go over it if we want to maybe a bit more coral and shall we do a little bit of either coastal cabana or maybe the pacific point on the ends of the tail maybe Magenta's too bright. Yeah, it is really bright. I agree. But it's there now. <laughs> I might do a second one later and see if I prefer it. I don't know. I don't know. You never know with these colours. They're so bright. Just going to grab another dauber. Okay, let's see. How is it looking? You know what? Even though it's bright, I don't mind it. Magenta is bright, but I think on this, it's okay. It's going to stand out. <laughs> All right, I'm going to actually try and blend that in a little bit. I think on this background, you need a fair bit of bright. Slide the magenta for some water to tone it down. Mm, yeah, you could do that. We could do a bit of water splatter and just see how it comes out. I don't mind it against the background though. You know, by itself, here on the paper, yeah, I think it looks really, really bright. But on the paper, I don't mind it. All right, let's try stripping and see how that turns out because it can't it can't be bad. Okay, let's pull that off, get my bits and pieces away. Let's grab some water. 
and just see how this is going to look. Interesting, it's not really changing it. <laughs> but it's kind of made some of the colours, like if I can see a little bit of bleeding into these colours here. All right, let's put a couple of dimensionals on the back. I'm going to use a couple of big ones here. And a couple of minis. Maybe one just here. Oh, and maybe two. We could still up. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Close this ink. So oh, sorry, Jody. <laughs> Back. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? That'll be the question. Lost sound on you. Have you got my picture? Can you see me? Lost you and no sound. You can see me. That's a yes. Or can you just hear me? Yes and see me. Okay. What happened was my phone just died. <laughs> I didn't realise it. I thought it had more battery. But I guess it just didn't. So, but that's okay because we were kind of finished. Okay, this is what it was looking like. So, I kind of like it. It's not my normal size, normal style of card, but I like it anyway. Thanks for sticking with me and being patient when these technical issues happen. It just happens sometimes. You can see me now. Great. All right. So all I'm doing is I'm now putting my I've just glued, I've just glued my card onto the Bermuda Bay base like this. Right. And I'm going to add a sentiment and I'm going to post this card for you so you can see it. And I'm going to call this a night. So I hope thank you so much guys for sticking with me. I know sometimes we have these technical issues. <laughs> But it comes good. So um, I know, see, the phone is my audio source. So if the phone dies, we lose everything. Um, but luckily I knew straight away what had happened. So I um, just clicked back over and turned my sound on on my computer and we're good. <laughs> so it looks very reefy. It does a bit, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I don't mind it. It's interesting. It's not my normal kind of card. But the other card that we did tonight, this one, I think that turned out really lovely. So I hope that you had fun tonight and thanks for sticking with me through my technical issues. Ah, uh, you like the colour on the background? Yeah, I do too. I, I think it's growing on me. <laughs> but um, I'm going to add a sentiment and we'll get it posted so you guys can see the finished result. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Have a fantastic week. Whatever it is that you end up doing this week, it's second week of school holidays here for us. My boy is off to camp um, and my daughter's working. So I'm hoping that we get lots of things done. For those of you who are going up to the Hunter Valley on Wednesday, I'll see you there. And for those of you on my team, I normally go live on a Monday morning, but tomorrow morning I probably won't be because it's a public holiday and I'm going to be running my son around. So um, it might be Tuesday morning instead. So, um, Denise, you might prefer to see me on Tuesday morning. Okay, all right. Have a fantastic week, guys, whatever you're doing. Um, I hope that you find time to be creative. Don't forget the online class finishes tomorrow night. If you haven't registered, um, get in and do that either by placing an order of $50 or by buying the tutorial for $20. All right, have a fantastic week, and I will see you soon. Bye.